Welcome to Dr. O's Three Easy Rules of Significant Figures. I'm Dr. O, and in this video, you will learn my oh-so-simple rules for determining the significant figures for the important numbers in your life. In this video, we will learn the rules, we'll apply the rules to lots of examples, and by the end of the video, you will be well rehearsed with these three easy rules and able to make determinations regarding significant figures on your own. So, let's get started. Let's start by taking a look at these three easy rules. Rule number one states that leading zeros never count. Now when you have a number that starts with a zero or even many zeros, those beginning zeros will never be counted towards part of your significant digits and there are no exceptions to that rule. See how easy that is? Rule number one, so simple. Rule number two states that trailing zeros count only when a decimal is present. When your number has one or more zeros at the end, those zeros will count as significant figures only if you see a decimal somewhere in the number. If there's no decimal, those zeros don't count. Rule number two, a little more involved than rule number one, but very simple and easy. Just look for the decimal. Rule number three, numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. This rule is telling us that any number between 1 and 9 will count, as well as any zeros that may be sandwiched in between those numbers. So these are the three easy rules. Now let's take a look at some examples of how to apply these rules. Let's look at some examples and apply rule number one, leading zeros never count. So here we have the number 007. It's a great number, and it's been around for a really long time. Dr. John D. was court magician and counsel to Queen Elizabeth I. And when he traveled on the Queen's behalf, this was the number that he used to identify himself in correspondence with the Queen. So before it was Bond, James Bond, it was actually D, John D. What about the significant figures, though? Well, rule number one says that leading zeros never count. So... Those first two zeros are going to go away, leaving us with only the 7. So how many significant figures does 007 have? Just one. Sorry, James. So how about this number? 0145. Well, rule number one says that leading zeros never count. So that zero at the beginning is not going to be important to us, but the 1, the 4, and the 5 are. So how many significant figures does 0145 have? It has three. Here we have 0014. Rule number one states that leading zeros never count, which means that the first two numbers, which are zeros, are going to go away, and we are left with the one and the four. So how many significant figures does 0014 have? It has two. And in our last example, it should come as no surprise that we would have 00051. And what does rule number one say? Rule number one says leading zeros never count. So we say bye bye to the first three zeros, leaving us with the five and the one, and we have a number that has only two significant figures. So rule number one, leading zeros never count. Here we have rule number two. Rule number two states that trailing zeros only count when a decimal is present. With this rule, the presence or the absence of a decimal will be the deciding factor whether or not those decimals at the end of a number will count. So it's like a scavenger hunt, and we're looking for that decimal. So let's take a look at some examples and apply rule number two. Now our first example is 140. Does anybody see a decimal? Me neither. Rule number two states that trailing zeros only count when a decimal is present. So without a decimal, the zero at the end of this number doesn't count towards our significant figures, which means that our significant digits are the one and the four, and our example has two significant figures. Our next number is 9,310. And rule number two states that trailing zeros only count when a decimal is present. So without a decimal, and we can see this number has no decimal, that ending zero 
will go away, and our remaining numbers of 9 and 3 and 1 will count towards our significant digits, which means in 9,310, without a decimal, we only have three significant figures. If we change that number just a smidge, like adding a decimal, now we have 9,310 with a decimal. And how does that change things? Well, rule number two says that trailing zeros only count when a decimal is present. So now that we have a decimal, that ending zero becomes important in our significant figures. So we have a nine, a three, a one, and a zero that will count towards our significant digits, which means that in this example, we have four significant figures. And in our last example, we have 120, also with a decimal. What does rule number two say? Rule number two says that trailing zeros only count when a decimal is present. Because of the presence of the decimal, all three of these numbers are going to be important to us, and this number will have three significant figures. And lastly, rule number three, which states that numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. So if it's not a zero at the beginning of a number or a zero at the end of a number, those numbers are going to count. If it is a zero at the end, we've already dealt with that using rule number two, right? Yeah. So let's look at some examples and apply rule number three. Our first example is 447. Rule number three says that numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. Well, there are no zeros here, so all the numbers are going to count towards our significant figures, which means that 447 has three significant figures. Our next example is 1003. Rule number three says that numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. A quick examination of this number reveals there are no leading zeros or trailing zeros, right? but we do have two zeros in the middle. What about those numbers? Well, rule number three says that numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. Those zeros in the middle are not leading or trailing, so they count towards our tally of significant figures. So the one, those two middle zeros, and the three will count. So this is an example of zeros being sandwiched in between two non-zero numbers. And in the case of 1003, this number will have four significant figures. All right, here we have 10,030. Rule number three says what? that numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. Well, based on just that, we know that four of these numbers are going to count towards our tally of significant figures. But what else do we have here? We have a trailing zero, right? What rule deals with trailing zeros? Rule number two. Well, I've kept this example a little bit simple so that we can apply just basically rule number three. So without this decimal um, that rule number two requires us to have, we can get rid of that ending zero, that trailing zero. And in this case, we now have the one and the two zeros and the three uh, counting towards our significant figures for a total of four numbers being uh, significant in 10,030. If we take this example and we tweak it just a little bit and we make it 10,038, it becomes very simple to apply rule number three. Rule number three says that numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. And now we have no leading zeros, nor do we have trailing zeros, which means that every single one of these numbers becomes important when determining significant figures. And in this example, this number will have five significant figures. Let's mix it up a little bit. Let's look at some examples and cite which rule or rules we're invoking to determine how many significant figures that number has. Oh, it's going to get exciting. All right, 728 is our first example. 
Well, rule number one deals with leading zeros, and we have none, so that rule doesn't apply. Also, there are no trailing zeros, so rule number two doesn't apply here either, which leaves us with rule number three. Numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. That being the case, how many important digits do we have? We have three, the seven, the two, and the eight, which means we have three significant figures. In this example, we have 13.92, and we have a decimal. Now, what rule is concerned with decimals? Well, that would be rule number two regarding trailing zeros. Well, there are no zeros in this number, trailing or otherwise, so neither rule number one or rule number two are going to apply, do they? Which leaves us with rule number three. And rule number three states that numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count, which means that all four of these numbers are going to be important to us, and 13.92 has four significant figures. Now here's our next example. What? Well, we haven't seen anything like this before. That's right. So we're going to talk about it right now. Here we have 1.3 times 10 to the third, which is written in scientific notation. Now when determining significant figures for numbers in scientific notation, you simply disregard the exponent and you look at the number in front. Voila. See how easy that is? Actually, that number in front has a name, and it's called the mantissa. And in this case, our mantissa is 1.3. Now, looking at 1.3, we can see there are no zeros, leading or trailing, so neither rule 1 or 2 are going to apply, which means that the only rule left would be rule number 3, which states that numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. So, the 1 and the 3 are our important numbers, which means that we have two significant figures in this number. And you thought it was going to be hard. Let's look at another one like that. Here in our example, we have 9.20 times 10 to the negative 2, which is similar to the previous example in that we have a number with an exponential part. Well, the good news here is that we know what to do with that. Bam! You give that exponential part the old strike through. And that leaves us with 9.20. Now what do we see? Well, we have a trailing zero, don't we? And what rule deals with that? That would be rule number two. And the rule is that trailing zeros only count when a decimal is present. Do we have a decimal? We sure do. It's between the nine and the two. So that means that trailing zero is now important to us. What other rule applies here? Well, that would be rule number three. So applying these two rules, we can determine that the nine, the two, and that zero are our important digits, and that 9.20 to the negative two has three significant figures. All right, let's look at another example. Here we have 0 0.00823. And what's the first thing that we see? Leading zeros. What rule deals with leading zeros? Rule number one. And what does rule number one say about those leading zeros? It says leading zeros never count. But Dr. O, there's a decimal. Mm-hmm. Does rule number one concern itself with decimals? No, it doesn't. It's the simplest of all the rules, and it says that leading zeros never count. That's the end of the story. So there they go. Bye-bye. Now we're left with the 8, the 2, and the 3. What rule goes in effect here? That would be rule number 3. Numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. These are the important numbers for us, the 8, the 2, and the 3. So we can determine that... 0.00823 has, in fact, three significant figures. Now, here we have 41.3010. So, what do we see? Well, among other things, we have a trailing zero, right? Rule number two deals with trailing zeros, and it says that trailing zeros only count when a decimal is present. Is there a decimal here? Yep, there is. And even though it's all the way over to the left between the 1 and the 3, 
its mere presence means that any zeros that appear at the end of this number will count towards significant figures. What other rule are we going to invoke? Well, then that would be rule number three, because in addition to trailing zeros, we have other numbers that are not leading or trailing zeros, so they're going to count. Remember, rule number three says numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. So with our two rules invoked, we can now determine our significant figures, which is going to be actually all of them. So 41.301, and yes, this last zero are going to count, and this number, in fact, has six significant figures. Now here in this example, we have 10 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, realistically, you're not likely to see a number like this, but we're going to use it to in, uh, in this example to apply our rules. So even without looking at the three easy rules for determining significant figures, what's the thing that we can do first? Well, if you said bid farewell to that exponent, congratulations, you've learned something and you would be correct. Now we can apply our three easy rules. Well, rule number one doesn't apply because there are no leading zeros. How about rule number two? Yep, there's a trailing zero in our mantissa in there. Does anybody see a decimal? Nope, because there isn't one. When rule number two says that trailing zeros only count when a decimal is present. So without a decimal in our mantissa, that trailing zero doesn't count. So it's going to go away. So what does that leave us with? Well, it leaves us with the number one. And applying number three, rule number three to that number one, rule number three says that numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. So in fact, that number one in our mantissa is our only significant digit. And in the final analysis of this number, the example 10 times 10 to the negative fifth, it has only one significant figure. So let's work two more examples before we call this video done. Here we have 0 0.07250. Now in this example, we have leading zeros, we have trailing zeros, we have decimals. We're just ringing all the bells on this one, aren't we? So let's start with rule number one. Rule number one says, Leading zeros never count. So we know that those first two zeros are going to go away. Well, we do have a trailing zero, and rule number two says that trailing zeros only count when a decimal is present. Is there a decimal here? Why, yes, there is. And by its mere presence, our trailing zero becomes important to us. And because we have non-zero numbers, we also invoke rule number three, which states that numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count. So with all the rules invoked, these become our important numbers, the seven, the two, the five, and yes, that trailing zero, which means that we have four significant figures in this number. And our last example is the oh so very almost binary 0 0.0100. And like the previous example, this number will invoke all three of the easy rules. We have leading zeros, and hopefully at this point you know that rule number one says that those leading zeros will never count, so we're just going to cross those out. And we have rule number two to deal with our trailing zeros, which state that trailing zeros only count when a decimal is present, and yeah, we got a decimal, so our trailing zeros are important, and because we have at least one non-zero number here, we look to guidance from rule number three, which says that numbers that are not leading zeros are trailing zeros count, and with all the rules invoked, we can see that the one and the two trailing zeros are our important digits, and that our example has three significant figures. So once more, here are the three easy rules for determining significant figures. Rule number one deals with the zeros to the left of a number, and we now know that leading zeros never count. Rule number two deals with the zeros to the right of a number at the end of a number, and those trailing zeros count only when a decimal is present. And rule number three deals with everything in between. Apply the rules in that order, and you'll get it right 
every time. Thanks for watching.